We made it. You're in the right place, folks, because today is the 100th episode of Where the Money Is. I love that. It is Wednesday. It is the 100th episode of Where the Money Is. David, how are you feeling? I feel good. You ready to ready to, ready to get going with this special episode today? Very ready. Uh, we've we've got a lot of good things going on. We've got all special segments for today, and at the end of the show, we have the winner of the 100th episode contest uh, to win that limited edition Where the Money Is sweatshirt. Very exciting. It's gonna be. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be epic. Uh, after that epic intro, we can do nothing other than be epic this exactly. show. Exactly. Uh, all right, starting off, best and worst. Over the first 100 episodes, what what is the best thing that came that came out of your Actually, you know what? Let's start with the worst. The what's worst? The, what's the worst? What's the worst thing that came out of your mouth? Oh <laughs> man, a lot to choose a lot to choose from in that category. <laughs> Keep that in your head. That's uh I would say the worst thing was probably my NFL picks, right? Ooh. I mean, it doesn't get worse than that. That's I picked <laughs> Patriots to win, uh, just just really bad. And in the Super Bowl, you had oh, the Broncos. But you you actually helped one of our one of the D WTMIers, right? I, I made them some a little bit of money there. I should say I do have one outstanding prediction: is okay. that Duke would win the NCAA basketball championship. I don't feel great about that right now, but still outstanding. So that wasn't great. Uh, also, not great for me the fact that I did not think any college students listened to us, and I was oh, quickly yeah. proved wrong. You we had emails quick. come in. Twitter's come in, they said, David's wrong, he's an idiot. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna stick with those two things. I, I was going back through old episodes trying to find something really boneheaded that I said, which I'm sure it happened, and I'm sure I'd love someone to call me out on it. I couldn't find one thing that I said, man, that was just completely wrong. There's a challenge for our listeners. There you go. If you remember the boneheaded things that David said, go ahead and call What about out. you, what, what, what do you regret saying? All right, look, when when new technologies, when new things are coming around, it, it can take a little it can take a little prying to get me to jump on board. Old guys like you. Old old guys like me, exactly. So, uh, with with Bitcoin uh, kind of coming onto the scene, with peer to peer lending uh, continuing to grow, th those are two things that, that when we first brought them up on the show, I was more skeptical than not, and. I don't, I, I'm not pretending that, that these are things that everybody should hop on board with and that they're guaranteed to, to work out. But as we've continued to cover them on the show, uh, I think both Bitcoin and peer-to-peer -peer lending, and with peer-to-peer -peer lending in particular, on Friday, so, mm -hmm. so two days from now, we're going to air the interview we did with, uh, with Ron Suber of right. Prosper. Um, and, and that gives a lot of good background on what peer-to-peer -peer lending is, what it's, what it's all about. So. Uh, my, my skepticism, my initial skepticism about the new, about Bitcoin, about peer-to-peer -peer lending in particular, I'd like to take that back. That's fair. Okay, how about your best? The best thing, I don't want to toot our horn too much. It's but, the 100th show. Okay, we're, 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 allowed, do we're allowed to toot. Um, do, do, we have a, do we have a horn on here anywhere? I don't know. Do that. That's close enough. We, we said time and time again during October or whenever it was happening that investors should ignore the government shutdown noise. Do not go out and sell your stocks. And that sounds crazy to us. Why would we ever do that? But some people were out there really wondering, is this gonna be a crisis? Should I get out of the market now? And we said time and time again, this is noise, this is not going to affect businesses five, 10 years down the road. Ignore this. Same with the debt ceiling, that's gonna come back up again. Maybe it roils the markets a little bit, but to long-term investors, it should not matter. And we said that, and I think we were right. There you go. My my best my best actually builds on my worst, and and that's that um, I was able to keep an open mind about these things. So I had the skepticism about Bitcoin, had the skepticism about about peer to peer lending. I'm guessing as other things come up, I'll have skepticism about other things. Uh, but I want to uh, keep that open mind because I'm going to be wrong about things. That's the you know it's uh, Peter Lynch I think it was that said that that. Uh, even good investors, even the best investors, are typically going to be right just six out of ten times. Right, and that's in their investments. That's in the things that they feel strongly about. So, given a lot of the topics we we are talking about on this show, some of them are things that we're putting money behind and investing in. Some of them aren't. So we're going to be wrong a lot, and, and I think it's going to be important for us in. in 
terms of helping WTMIers out there, keep that open mind. Indeed. And having viewers and listeners that are willing to call us out. I love it. All right. Next segment. This, this, was, this was a brainchild of yours, David, and I really love this. This is the 100s segment. So we're going to go, we're going we're gonna to take a look back 100 years, 100 months, 100 days uh, to explore what was going on over those hundreds periods and then look ahead 100 days, 100 months, and 100 years. So let's start with 100 years ago. What was happening 100 years ago and, and what's, what's the takeaway? From a it? lot was happening. A lot was happening. 100 years ago and I wasn't there. So really? this is secondhand. Sure? This is anecdotal. <laughs> I wasn't there to experience it. But uh, 1914 was the beginning of World War I, and we weren't calling it World War I. You can see we have a picture of the, the New York Times from 1914 right there, and you see the headlines about Archduke Franz Ferdinand getting, you know, the start of everything. Uh, it, was just a, it was just a war then. And, and bringing it back to kind of investing in financials, the stock market closed. The New York Stock Exchange closed in August and did not reopen until December Think about that. That's not exactly, the, that's not the five years that Buffett talks about, but that's, uh, people would l absolutely lose their minds if that happened today. And, and the reason behind this absolutely was, lose their minds. Uh, I guess the rationale was that European investors were panicking, they would sell their shares in America, demand gold, and all the gold would leave the country, uh, and the U.S. would abandon the gold standard, the dollar would become valueless, and everything would go crazy. I mean, that's a panic, mm -hmm. that's a crisis. The government shutdown is not a crisis compared to this. I mean, it's, it's really incredible that that was only 100 years ago. I mean, wow. <laughs> is, is there a stock you own today that if the stock market were closed down for four months, you'd feel uneasy about it? No. Four months, no. There you go. That's good. I'll, 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 I'll throw a couple pop culture things in there. Okay, I don't please, want to completely. please do. Please 19, do. 1914 was the year Babe Ruth made his major league debut there and Wrigley go. Field opened. So there you go, some baseball fans out there, some pop culture stuff for you. Didn't you have a, I thought you had another pop culture one on there. Is that the? I'll get to it later. Oh, okay. What okay. are you looking at 100 years ago? Well, it was hard to, it was hard to overlook the World War, the right. whole World War I thing. That was, that was a pretty big deal in, in uh, 1914. So what was interesting about that to me is that if you go back um, and, and look at stock market returns. So Robert Schiller has sort of reconstructed what the S&P 500 would look like before the S&P 500 mm -hmm. actually existed. Uh, so if you go back uh, between 1914 and today, you're looking at an average annual return on the S&P 500 of about 10% per year, okay? And if we think about, think about all of the concerns that are, that are in front of investors today, but between 1914 and today, you've got World War I, World War II, Vietnam, the Cold War, the, the Great, Great Depression, Depression <laughs> 1987 crash, the dot-com crash, the oil shock and embargo, and I'm just hitting a few off the top of my head. All of that happened, and the stock market still returned 10% per year, on average, a com compounded annual return of 10% per year. Uh, the other interesting thing, and, and this is kind of a side note, but as I was calculating those returns, I was looking at Schiller's data and I kept coming up with a 5.5% annual return, which didn't sound right to me. Right. And, and thanks to, to Morgan Housel for running some, running some numbers for me. But the difference was the dividends. When you don't include dividends in the stock returns, the returns are much, much lower. And here's how much lower. Uh, if you don't include dividends between 1914 and today, the last 100 years, it's, uh, you, you turn $1,000 into $210,000. Sounds pretty decent. Right. If you do include ten th uh, the dividends, you're turning $1,000 into $13.2 million. I didn't even use the sound machine. <laughs> <laughs> that is a pretty big, big difference. difference. All right, moving on to 100 months ago, David. What, what are you looking at from 100 months ago? 100 months ago on? puts us in October. 2005, I believe, a great time for the banking industry and fi oh. financial stocks. Uh, Rip Roaring. Looking at, looking at Bank of America, they had just purchased credit card issuer MBNA mm -hmm. uh, for $35 billion. That is an enormous <laughs> deal right there. Uh, at the time, the stock was at... Right. That's just, well, that's just slightly less than they've spent on legal settlements, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and going back 100 months ago from today, the stock price is at $42-ish. It's now a little bit below $17, so a little bit lower. Brian Moynihan was in charge of the bank's private wealth management business, and of the seven executives that they detailed in their 2005 annual report, he is the only one that is still with the bank. The rest of them... 
gone. Uh, so it was Ken Lewis, <laughs> all the others. So much different management team here at Bank of America uh, than, than, than there was um, back in 2005. And I couldn't not include Countrywide when we talk about Bank of America. At the time, 2005, Countrywide was the nation's biggest mortgage lender. They had originated $491 billion of mortgages. And the shocking part of that is, is that only 30% of those were originated through their retail <laughs> channel. Only 30% of those were paid back. And so 70% were from these mortgage correspondent lenders, mortgage brokers. Only 30% were done through their channel. So it just shows you how much things have changed. Wells Fargo originated over 500 billion last year. I don't think any of that came from correspondent lending. So a lot has changed since 2005. That is, uh, that is, those are some pretty big changes. Uh, looking back at 2005, one thing, I, I, went, uh, I went back to August, but this was um, August 2005. Uh, Katrina, mm -hmm. uh, Hurricane Katrina, made its landfall. Uh, this was, um, what, what, what can I really say about the, the human and the economic toll uh, of Hurricane Katrina? Um, I, I'm not ignoring the human toll of it. For the purposes of this show, though, this was a very significant event for the insurance sector. Mm -hmm. um, this was just a reminder of the kind of natural disasters and events that can happen. And when you think about investing in property and casualty insurers, it just emphasizes that uh, these risks don't happen, don't, don't come about every year. But when they do. But when they do, they really do. And, and you think about Warren Buffett and his whole idea of it's only when the tide goes out that you know who, who's swimming naked. Mm -hmm. And a lot of PNC insurers are out there swimming naked. They're writing policies that they shouldn't be writing. And it's when an event like that. So it's not about what they're, what they're reporting this year. It's about the, the culture and the, the risk underwriting at these PNC insurers because when something like that comes around, they better be ready for it. Some pop culture for you, 2005? Yeah, please. Hit that me. was the year that Batman Begins came out. So it was before we even got the whole Dark Knight greatness. Wow. That was the top movie according to IMDb. But that was, that was really good. It was a good it movie. It was really good. Until they changed like the female lead. It went from like, who was it? It was Katie, Katie Holmes. Holmes to Maggie Gyllenhaal. That was a little confusing. But that, but that was a good switch. Number two song. It was a good switch. Well, number two song is your anthem, Holla Bat Girl by Gwen Stefani. <laughs> number one was Mariah Carey, Money. We Belong Together. I'm sorry Gwen Stefani's didn't get number one. I know you're <laughs> upset. That's it. That's all I, I, I was just, I was so upset remembering <laughs> the pain, the pain came back that to me. That it did not get the number one billboard <laughs> ranking. 100 days ago, what are we looking at? This is October of last year, right? I went back and listened to our podcast 100 days ago, see what we were talking <laughs> about. you. You started Michael Vick in fantasy. Look how much things have changed just <laughs> in 100 days. I mean, wow. He didn't even, he didn't uh, even play the rest of the me, season. Don't get me and started got, on my on my. He got you negative one point, so. In only 100 days, look how much stuff has changed. Nick Foles comes in. It's unbelievable. Uh, we, t we were also talking about how mortgage rates suffering through the environment. They had just reported earnings. We just talked about American Capital Agency reporting earnings the other day. Very similar problems, taking losses mm -hmm. on the bonds on their books. But, yeah, not too much has changed in the last 100 days other than Michael Vick kind of fading off into obscurity. Well, if we want to talk about the sentiment of the market, one of the things that's that's changed a bit is, is that sentiment. A hundred days ago, CNBC published an article with the title, The Economy? Who Cares? The Stock Market is Up. Uh, this was about, uh, the article was looking at the idea that, that investors were potentially ignoring fundamentals, companies uh, ignoring the economy, uh, companies not reinvesting in growth and instead buying back stock. Um, and yet the stock market continued to go higher. Mm -hmm. we, we ended 2013 with a 30% gain on the stock market. And this article was essentially saying, well, it's just because everybody's starry eyed and that, that sort of thing. It seems like at least right now, some of that, some of that pep has, uh, has disappeared mm -hmm. from, uh, from investors. Um, but that's not the kind, it's, it's an interesting thing to look back on. It's not the kind of thing that we tend to worry about on this show. Exactly. We, we actually do like looking at fundamentals. We love it. We, re we, we do love it. Let's we go to the future. It. That's how we made it, 100 shows. Yes. Looking into the future, whew, this is scary. 100, <laughs> day, 100 days from now, David, what are we looking at? Uh, 100 days from now will be in May, I believe. So we'll have gone through the bank's dividend uh, buyback, kind of Fed approval, the CCAR C -car. process. What is it? Comprehensive capital, whatever, analysis, whatever. CCAR. Who's, pay, who's paying a dividend after the CCAR? Um, this is pure, pure speculation. Maybe not Citigroup. I think Bank of America finally ups that, that one penny per quarter dividend there. Not gonna make any predictions, but it's possible. I think they have the strength to do it. So we'll get through that. I think that'll be kind of more win behind the bank sales. Mm -hmm. I, I really can't imagine 
anyone failing the process at this point. Everyone's built up the capital ratios. That would be pretty bad. We saw JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs not get a failing grade last year, but just the fact that they had to go back and change some of their processes around how they were doing it. Hopefully they have that fixed now. Uh, it, it was just the end of last year that they fixed it, it just before they were submitting their applications for the C card. So, so we'll have gone through that. We'll go through this debt ceiling brouhaha again, whatever. 100 days from now, we'll see. 100 days from now, like you said, it'll be May. And the, the traditional stock market wisdom is sell in May and go away, David. Mm -hmm. 100 days from now, are you going to be selling in May to go away? I will not. I'm going on vacation in <laughs> August, so maybe I'll sell in August and go away. OK. What about uh, you? No, no, it's crazy. It's stupid. It, we, 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 we talk over and over again on this show about how you're buying businesses and you're buying to hold them for 5, 10, even 20 years. So selling in May to go away, not what we're about. 100 months from now. Uh, we're looking at the year 2022. David, what, do you, what are you thinking is going to be happening in 2022? We could be two presidents removed, right? I mean, we could have another president after Obama and then someone else maybe. Could be interesting. Could that'll, be. Be, that'll be different. Be. Um, you got to endure that, that campaigning process. I like to, <laughs> I like to be an optimist. I'm going to say the world is going to be a better place than it is Look today. At you. And Look David you. Gardner co-founder of The Motley Fool. He's a lot smarter than me. I'm willing to admit that. And he says, we're living through the most exciting technological age of all time. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that's going to happen over the next eight years or so is going to be incredible. I mean, we just saw Facebook just turn 10 years old. Who knows what's going to be the next huge innovation? I think the world's going to be in a lot better place. There's going to be less poverty, less death, less sickness. So I'm optimistic. Wow. I, I, I'm, I'm almost, I almost don't want to share mine because mine is... You're like, I think the world's going to end. <laughs> Between now and 2022, we will have an economic downturn. Mm -hmm. We will have... I'm, I'm relatively sure that in that span of time, so since the end of 2009 or middle of 2009, whenever the, the last downturn uh, finished, technically, and, and by 2022, we'll have an economic downturn. I'm not worried about that from the perspective that the world's going to end or that I shouldn't own stocks or that I should sell all my stocks and wait for that to happen. What I will be interested to see is how much banks have learned mm -hmm. and which banks have learned since the last credit crisis. Because when it, banks are pro-cyclical businesses, so when the economy is doing well, the banks do well. When the economy is not doing well, the banks don't do well. So when, when I think about in particular, uh, and, and I'll mention the big banks here first, Citigroup and Bank of America obviously did so much wrong during the, uh, the lead up to the last credit crisis and during the last credit crisis. So for Citigroup, it was really stuff done before the crisis. It right. was poor lending practices. It was investing in, in, in a lot of bad securities like CDOs, and it led to massive losses during the credit crisis. For Bank of America, they handled themselves a little bit better, I think, before the credit crisis, but then they went and wasted all of that by buying Countrywide and buying Merrill Lynch. So with new leadership at both of these banks going into the next credit crisis, I'm going to be interested to see how much has changed. And I'm going to be looking at that very closely as we get, because we can watch the credit cycle move along and, and, and see when it starts to get long in the tooth. And I'm going to be looking at what Mike Corbett's doing and what Brian Moynihan's doing at that point in time mm -hmm. to figure out, have these guys learned something? Can I trust them going into that next downturn? Very important. Now, finally, <laughs> finishing off, 100 years down the road, 2114, what's the world look like? David? Boy, I'm going to be old. <laughs> I'm going to be very, very old. We're still going to be alive. Oh, yeah. I feel like I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm feeling your optimist vibe on this medical technology. We're still, we're still going to be around, still doing this show, right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, here's, a, here's an easy prediction. I do not think, that's a, for you watching, that's what the world's going to look like in 100 years. Flying cars. For those not watching, buildings. that is like a, it's a space, spaceship with, and there's spiky buildings everywhere. Exactly. It kind of looks like a dystopia to me. I'm not yeah, going to lie. Not great. Where's your optimism? I don't think bank branches will exist anymore in 100 years. We're already seeing them No, close. No bank branches. No bank branches. I don't really? think paper money will exist. It's all Bitcoin. In 100 years. Maybe not Bitcoin, but, but something else. I also you think. You heard here, David said it's only Bitcoin. In I also years. think finance and investing in general is going to be incredibly global on a scale that we can't even really imagine now. Uh, the borders in terms of buying and selling securities, I think, will be completely dropped almost. It, it'll be as easy as going on to your whatever you're using and buying something in Singapore or China or wherever you need to do. Um, I also think it's going to be a lot harder to beat the market in 100 years as we see information go across all of the world. So many investors come into the space 
uh, as skill improves over the next 100 years, I think it's going to be increasingly hard. I think it's still possible. Mm. But in 100 years, it's going to be a lot harder to beat the market than it is today, in my opinion. I don't know if I agree with you on that, because the information is part of it. And that's, that's a huge part of it. But we're already seeing that information making its way to computers and being parsed by computers. Um, and the computers have, a, have an advantage on that. But in terms of evaluating businesses, that's part of the reason, too, why I'm so uh, tied to the idea of investing as investing in businesses because there are certain things that computers can't process, can't just crunch that data, anything that's data-driven. Um, and, and also, you know, for the stuff that computers aren't doing, you have to consider that the behavioral aspects of humans are still going to be there. I don't think that's going to change 100 years from now. What I had down here is that driverless cars mm. 100 years from now will be a bin there and done that. Oh, yeah. We'll be, we'll be so far beyond that. And part of the reason I bring this up is I, I'm, I'm blanking on which hedge fund it is, but there's a hedge fund, Lone Pine, was it? Pine River. Pine River. Uh, shorting Progressive, the car insurance company, based on the idea of, of driverless cars. Um, I think that, like I said, 100 years from now, driverless cars will be a been there and done that. However, the insurance industry will still be alive and thriving. There will be some, still something around the transportation industry, the personal transportation industry, because there's always risk. And there's always a, a want and a need to, to lay that risk on somebody else. I'll also say that 100 years from now, we will all be wearing trench, trench coats. Because I don't know if you've seen any movies about the future. Yep. But everybody wears trench coats. Or just the future. silver one piece that you zip up. <laughs> you, you can wear that. I'm going to stick That'll with the trench work for coat. Me. <laughs> you'll, you'll go with the silver one piece. Yep. So there we go. There's, there's the hundreds. Um, that, was a, that was a great segment, David. Um, let's move on to the mailbag. We have an email address. It's WTMI at fool.com. Uh, we're also on Twitter at TMF Financials. And here's some of our favorite tweets and, and mailbags uh, since we started the show. David, why don't you start us off? Let's throw the first one up there. No particular order. This one is from Keith Tenberg. He says, at TMF Financials, at The Motley Fool, three of my, wait, three of my podcasts are foolish now. Thanks. So this is when we first came on. Keith says, Another podcast, we should mention that we have Market Foolery, the daily kind of broader podcast that touches every sector, not just financials. And then we have the Motley Fool Money Show that runs on Friday and the weekends that is a radio syndicated show. It's a little bit longer, again, more in depth, got great interviews on there. And then we came aboard and gave a little niche podcast. Is, it, is Investor Beat on iTunes yet? Investor Beat as well, yeah. It's yeah. a video. There you go. We got video. Four. There. You, can, you can have Foolish Four. Yeah. Foolish Four podcast. We appreciate right. it, Keith. Let's see the, the get the next one up on the screen here. The next one is another tweet. This is from Tim Butters uh, at TMF Financials. Ugh, cupcake bubble is so annoying. Disclosure, long brownies. This <laughs> refers to our talk about the bubble in in cupcakes. I have I have long been railing against the cupcake bubble. Bubble. I, however, am not long brownies, but I am really? long pies, particularly fruit pies. Really big on fruit pie. I think that needs to displace the cupcake and, and soon. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know if you can scale fruit pies as much as you can cupcakes, but give it a shot. Find a way. Yeah, you can Somebody try. will find a way, and that's, that's when it'll happen. All right. Technology, David. It's technology. All right. What, do, what else do we got here? <laughs> this one is from Brandon Tomlinson. He says, at TMF Financials, saw love actually for the first time last Christmas, and now it's a holiday staple. The family man remains my favorite. Hashtag. I'm so alone. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were such a jerk when I said that Love Actually was one of my favorite Christmas movies. You were so dismissive of it. And, and I got to thank the WTMI community for coming to my defense and, and just letting you know that you're wrong and that's a great movie. Because it is. I had multiple friends say that you don't know what you're talking about. It's a great movie. So it, I didn't hear it just That movie warms my heart. Okay, yeah, that's fair. You, you're, you have a cold heart, don't you? I do. The Grinch. <laughs> All right, let's see the next one. Next one is Uber Facts, and this was a classic. The world record for having a ferret in your pants is a whopping five hours and 30 minutes. David, you tracked this one down. This is incredible. And what I want to know is when are we going to see you do the show with a ferret in your pants through the entire show? That's only the 500, 25 minutes. The 500th episode, maybe. That's, that's a promise. I will say, this tweet, the fact that we covered this on the show, you do not get that at Bloomberg, or you do not get that on yeah, the other no. financial podcasts. You don't get ferrets no, in your pants anywhere else. That is true. You gotta come here to get Only that. here. Yes. Next one, what do we got? Do we have some mailbags, more tweets? Let's dip into got, the mailbag. I think we got something else here. Do we not? 
We may not. We may not. All right, let's move on to the contest. We had a, a contest uh, to win a limited edition uh, WTMI sweatshirt in celebration of the 100th episode. We reached out to the WTMI community and said, tweet us or, uh, or write us uh, at our email address. Right. And we got a bunch of good ones. We got a whole bunch of good ones. I'm not sure what, did you put them in the winner order or are we going backwards? We're gonna go runners up first. Okay, runners so we're up first. Count down to the winner. All right, Heather. Let's see. Let's see the the first of the countdown. Uh, this is from Michael. This was an email. The one thing I like the most about your show is when you guys disagree. Uh, it does happen a lot. Probably not enough, David. Um, I like disagreeing, especially when I'm right. Fair enough. So that way, well, you're wrong. All right. <laughs> <laughs> next. Next. Uh, oh, we, this one was from Twitter from from Bill Stoller. He says at TMF Financials. I need to know, wait, I need to do a regression analysis on how bow tie flamboyance correlates with the Dow and how a WTMI jacket beats a tinfoil hat. That is creative. Great that, response that, from Yeah, that. we like I said, we got we got a lot of good ones and, and I appreciate the shout outs for the bow tie, the love for the bow tie, um, and, and Bill Bill nailed it there. Uh, what's what's our next runner up here? Uh, this is from Adam. The reason I can't start my day without the WTMI podcast is it gives a glimpse into a stuffy and oftentimes boring industry, but manages to make it fun, interesting, and oftentimes funny, plus imagining Matt K as a talking bow tie as I drive to work just makes me laugh. It's pretty much all I am, and that's, that's pretty much the kind of stuff that comes out of my mouth. What a bow tie would say, it's, you're, you're just nodding. Exactly. Yes. Correct. All right, I think we have one more runner up or so. Favorite thing about the show, two words. <laughs> bow ties. There that's it from, is. That's from Ray. So clearly we have a theme running here from our listeners. They're noticing something. Is that our last runner up? I think it may be. Are if it is, the, okay, we're on. If it is, we're ready for the winner. And can we get the drum roll? Oh, yes, yes. Please. Oh, we have a drum roll. Whoa. <laughs> Two drum rolls. <laughs> and this is the winner. I want you to read it off. This is from Kate, uh, at Kate Hall on Twitter. She writes, at TMF Financials, for your 100th episode, at Brett, Brad Della Parker and I start a podcast where the money was solely to honor and rerun the WTMI classic episodes one to 100. And, and I've got to give Brad Della Parker or Brad Parker uh, some credit too. He followed up that tweet by tweeting, we can even do a commentary track like on those cool Blu-ray discs that people watch on their TVs. There were so many great responses we got. This was just so creative, made me laugh. Uh, so Kate will be uh, getting that limited edition WTMI sweatshirt. Exactly. Uh, we really appreciate all of the WTMIers who participated in this. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. Um, I think you had, didn't you have one more that we're going to close out with? Oh, this I'll was, let you. This was definitely the longest. No, no, no. This is all you. I have to read it? Yep. Okay. Um, with, with chicken. chicken no, I'm not going to wear the chicken. All right. We, we had one more response that was very good from Eben. I hope I'm saying that right. Well, I think that's his first name. How do you say that one? Sejaning. Sejaning. I, I think we've got that right. Okay. Hopefully we've got that right. All right. I think it's a rap or a poem or maybe an extended haiku. I I'm not really sure. I think probably do this in the style of DMX. I will not be doing that. <laughs> and this is what he says. Maybe someone can say, I think that's the wrong beat or whatever. He says, WTMI, a premium value, fact not, fact not fiction, bow tie predictions, tie in your book to the game of chicken, vying for diamond's hair. Learning risk management in a most efficient model, either or, would I rather be listening to Friday's interview or learning SCC filings? Alas, decide to finish in the Twitter sphere with a box sound of cheering. WTMI is the best, taught me to score another stock success. Why I love WTMI, as said, the best. It's a good poem. So that, that's a great well, runner up there. Well read, David. That's, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So good effort there. Well, that's it. That's the 100th show. We should say uh, uh, thank you to our producer, Heather, for yeah, dealing with us every day. <laughs> uh, thank you to, to Chris Hill, down the, the host of Market Fooler and Motley Fool Money. He helped a lot. Allison Southwick. Allison Southwick, kind of our video guru here Susan at the Fool. Susan Catloth. Everybody here. Uh, we got, a, we got a, lot, a, lot of people, a lot of people behind us, a lot of people getting us here. And of course, we got to thank the WTMI viewers and listeners. You, we don't get to 100 episodes if nobody's listening to us. We started this off, didn't know how it would work out, and we've had such a great response. Thank you, all of you, for uh, tuning in every day. I'm Matt Kopenheffer. This is David Hansen. And, of course, we'll see you tomorrow. People on the show may have interest in the stocks they talk about, and The Motley Fool may have formal recommendations for or against. 
Don't buy or sell stocks based solely on what you hear.